Hello guys and girls, Voices from the Dark here. Welcome back to the Champion of Cyrodiil challenge with the one and only Marina Mistfire where we are leaving the Imperial City behind to go out in the world and explore. We are on the road to Bruma. We want to find ourselves a fence and you can actually see Bruma all the way up in the distance there. That's where we're headed. It'll take a little traveling to be sure, but on the way we're gonna find a lot of villages, like this village, named Wei. Hello. 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 This man may or may not have had a little incident, and we gotta do our best not to laugh at him, because if we do laugh at him, he'll refuse us the quest. You know, stranger, there comes a time in every man's life when he has to admit that he's lost the fight. Well, I've fought, and I've lost. Who did I lose to? Who is my great enemy? Well, don't laugh. It's a bunch of damn fish. <laughs> How can I help? Go on and la Wait. Help? Oh, well then. I'm a fisherman. Or at least I was. Until one of those slaughterfish damn near took my leg off. I was collecting their scales, see? I had a contract with this young alchemist. You wouldn't believe what he was paying for those scales. Then, last month, one of the bastards got a hold of my leg took me right out of the business. But this alchemist, he needs the scales right away. Hmm. The alchemist was paying so much for the scales that I'm close to having enough saved so that I can retire. But now I can't get out there to the lake. Not with this leg. I only needed 12 more scales. Can you believe it? I was so close. Hint, hint. I've picked up a few things in my travel. If you head out there and bring me back the 12 scales that I need, I can make it worth your time. Help an old fisherman out, won't you? He does give you a little... It's either a ring or an amulet. I can't remember, but it has some neat enchantment on it. Now, fighting slaughterfish is gonna be difficult, because they will most likely kill us in two hits, and we can't really fight them with spells underwater, nor can we use arrows underwater, and our melee capabilities aren't great and would also level our major skills, so... For now, I think we are going to leave that slaughterfish quest be, and we can rather pursue it in the future. However, I would like to check out the Wanet Inn, because there is a lady in the Wanet Inn. Oh, charm spell, I like. Who may or may not have something for us. So, what brings you here today? And by have something, I mean a request, like every other person in this gosh darn world. Welcome to the Wanet Inn. Could I interest you in a room, or perhaps a bit of wine? Wine, you say? Yes, actually, I'm quite fond of collecting all manners of wines from all over Tamriel. But one vintage continues to elude me. Shadow Banish wine. How I'd love to add it to my collection. Hint, hint. Say, that gives me an idea. You look like the adventuring type. If you can retrieve six bottles of Shadow Banished wine, I'll gladly pay you well. All I know about them is that they're found in the many fort ruins scattered all over Cyrodiil. Okay, tell me about the wine. Well, apparently the wine is so rare because it was only made in one tiny batch. It's the product of an alchemist who was also a vintner. Besides tasting incredible, the magic within the wine allows the imbiber to be gifted with night eye. The vintner made it special for the legion soldiers posted at the forts when they were active long ago. It was perfect for keeping lookouts warm on cold nights and helping them see better in the dark. Clever, eh? That's pretty clever. Any rumors? If you've been good... Way Shrines of Debella may bless your personality. Oh, that's my favorite stat. <laughs> Keep looking for that wine. Farewell. Fare thee well. Well then, that wine quest is going to be useful to pick up early on, because, well, we'll be exploring most dungeons either way, so we're going to come across the wine sooner or later, but there are a lot of forts in Cyrodiil, that's for sure. So we have some different signs here. If you take this road, we can get to Coral, Bruma, and Shadenhall, while the other signs lead to the other cities. What I love is the little detail on the Kvart sign, the claw marks, to symbolize that, well, maybe not everything is that great in Kvart. 
Now, Bruma is up there in the distance. We'll have to take the road. It's gonna wind and twist a little bit. But we'll get there. Oh, where did that fort come from? Oh my, it must be a, a magical fort. I tried to look away as it was about to pop in, but there's there there's no hiding it. There is no hiding it. <laughs> okay. Let's go check it out and maybe we would be able to find some Shadow Banish wine. Six bottles, then I suppose we gotta find six forts. If you just open up a map of Shadenhall, Shadenhall, of Cyrodiil and just look at all the different settlements and places you can come across on the world map. Oh boy. Oh, I hear, I hear something. I hear something bad. Where, where's Scampy? Oh wow! I spawned Scampy down there and he took care of business for me. Thank you, buddy. Then you'll come to realize how big our task is right now. How many things we have to get. If we jump up here, we'll be able to pick up a fine steel bow, which is gonna be quite useful, especially at our low level, because I don't think we can get a steel bow regularly just yet. So we'll equip that. Drop the iron one. I also got some steel arrows and some arrows of jolts, which has a little bit of a shock enchantment. Some bone meal, a gold emerald ring and absorb skill marksman. It's a little bit of a neat treasure here. Now this fort also has an interior that we might want to check out. Let's get inside. And by the power of Scampy we shall survive. Now, ooh, I actually think, do I, do I know this fort layout? Yes, I know. Okay, so this fort right here is no mere fort where you go in and you kill some skeletons and then move on your way. This is actually a place that's occupied by two different factions, bandits and marauders. Now, they're, they're both outlaws, they're both bandits. Marauder is just a different name for a bandit, but they don't actually like each other, so it's a very short fort, but we will get to see them uh, fight against each other. So that's neat, I won't even have to use my Frenzy spell to get them to fight each other, but it could be kind of fun. How much does Frenzy use again? 33. Okay, I think what we're gonna do is that we can have Frenzy on 1 for now, and then I'm gonna put a healing potion on 6, I think. Can I just prepare something? There we go. Because the healing potion is a nice thing to have. Okay. I cannot wait when enemies are nearby. Fair enough, fair enough. Just want to make sure we have enough health to be facing them, because we're going to come straight in the middle of their chaos. Okay. Great. You yes. see you. What have you been up to? Death. I I've lost them. Days ago. You can hear them talking. I avoid those things whenever I can. Who's Hot there? Creatures. Bye. Oh. Uh oh. Hello. Are you well? Oh, I see somebody. Whatever it was. Great, it's gone now. Oh. There you can see they're starting to fire. They're occupying uh, different uh, areas of the cave here. They're engaging in it. Oh, look at that. They're holding their own. Do they even have a vampire there? Who is that? Looks like a vampire. May just be a mage. Oh, I've been spotted. Yeah, that guy sees me. Can I spawn Scampy? Scampy, go! <laughs> oh, I sent a little Scampy down to deal with them. Okay, wonderful. Now let's... Oh, Argonian. Alright. Help me out here, Scampy. If he had some friends over, I would use Frenzy. Frenzy? Scampy! Oh my gosh. Ow! That's what I was hoping to avoid. Come on! Do something! Can't expect me to do something. I do have a fine steel bow now though, so I guess I can fight But Actually, I have Caliban's Grim Retort. This is really what I should be having on one. I think I'm not gonna use Fireball at all, so I think I'm gonna switch that up to Touch of Rage on two. All right, let's get him! Ow! Bam! <laughs> a solid hit straight to the face. Right, Scampy. <laughs> Just drop in a scamp. Haha! 
Where are they? Oh. What are you attacking behind you? Oh boy. Looks like we found the survivor of the battle that they had down here, but... At least when they kill each other, they will be too busy to kill me. That's something. Come on, Scampy! Go get her, boy! Oh boy. She's in the water. And there's more of them in the area. It's a bit of a confusing layout in this place. Oh. How you doing? What did she summon? I think she summoned some sort of bound weaponry. Alright, I'll, I'll leave her to you, Scampy. A bandit hedge wizard, that's who he was. Okay. Well then, most of them killed each other. Hey, that leaves less work for me. Can always appreciate that. This uh, marauder had a bad day too. Okay. That should be most of them taken care of. I think they managed to actually slaughter each other. But with this mace, we'll be able to fight back a little bit in melee combat. Now, Blunt is a major skill of ours. That must be said. Did we not get any experience when hitting him? I don't think we actually physically hit that Marauder. I think he died just before our impact landed, so... We need to be a little bit careful about the major skill, but as we saw when we went from level 1 to level 2, we almost leveled too slowly. Because we got way more minor skills than really needed, so using a little bit of blunt to increase the major skill increases just a little bit. At least now that our major minor skills are at such a low level, could be a good idea. Athletic skill, yay! You always feel so accomplished when you level up athletics. You're like, ah, oh, I earned that because I've been running around all the time. All right, open the gates. Thank you. Now, I believe there are some treasures over here in the different corners. Yes, there are. Good. But I don't think this is one of the fort where we will find the Shadow Banish Wine, unfortunately. So we'll have to keep looking. But this is another place cleared out then. Dark in the future. While you're editing this, note down that we cleared the fort. You probably already have. I mean, I, 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 trust, that, I trust that you have, but sometimes I forget things. So that's just a way. So we'll loot this chest, and we should make our way back outside. Anything good? Protect scroll. Oh uh, well, 400 gold in our pockets. Not too shabby. There we go. Back outside in the beautiful, uh, dying sunlight. Well, the sun is going down, so we might have to go through the wilderness on foot in the darkness. Oh boy. We'll make do. It's a little bit of a bedroll here, and some leak that I found in a torn sack of grain. Makes sense. Alright, let's try to get back on the road now. We could hunt down some deer over here, but... Actually, maybe we should. We need more arrows again. Oh, I have a few steel arrows now. But hitting this without even a name? Probably not. Oh, I got it! What do you know? I mean, I won't be able to kill it, so it was a waste of an arrow, but still. Good times all around. There's the Imperial City. What I really like about the city is that it functions well as a way mark, or, or like a landmark of sorts. You can orientate your rounds, yourself around the city. Even if you didn't use a map. If you saw the Imperial City and you figured out like which direction was north compared to the city. If you know, you look at the bridge and you're like, okay, I know that the bridge goes out from the city at the western sides. Then you're like, okay, so if I keep the bridge in this direction and look this way, then I know this is north. And then you could get to where you needed to go just based on that, really. But I figured no map was a unnecessary addition to this challenge, considering it would make one of the main troubles even harder, that is finding everything on the map. I do like the functionality of the map, being able to spot things when they are close by, although I feel like sometimes they are a bit too generous with how far away you spot things. Like you will see them on the map way before you can see them with your eyes. I would have preferred it if they only really started marking them when you got really close. You probably would have seen it either way. I don't know, just to sort of remind you that, oh, there, there is something over here. I don't know. But still, it's another fort, it's another opportunity for us to slaughter. I would love to try out the Frenzy spell. Now, the Frenzy spell does have a property that I haven't really properly talked about yet. And it can be extremely powerful. 
if you're in a city, if I, when I was in the city, had cast this spell on somebody like Puny Ancus in the waterfront, he would promptly begin attacking me. And that would count as assault on his end, but it does not, it's not considered to be an offensive spell, so I would not get a bounty for casting it on him, but he would get a bounty for fighting back. <laughs> so, what would that mean? Well, the city guards would show- can you do something, Scampy? The city guards would show up and they would slaughter Ankis on the spot, and he would try to fight back. And then nobody would be mad at me, and I would have gotten away with murder, so... In the future, if there's a person we don't really much like, that is one way we can get rid of them. Do you see how worthless Scampy can be? Can you just fight what you're supposed to fight? Oh my gosh, thank you. Little imp. Terrifying creatures. Come on, prove yourself, Scampy. Oh my gosh, they are worthless. Okay. Sorry, it just upsets me when they walk around and... Where's the enemy? Down here? One fireball to the face and I'm dead. Oh boy. Oh, there he is. There's an imp upstairs. Not that Scampy understands what that means. Get him, boy! He's right in front of you. There we go. Good job. So I wonder... I've never really used Frenzy that much, but I, I guess I could then use that in the Dark Brotherhoods. Like, if I need to kill somebody, I could cast that Frenzy spell on them in the street and they would go mad and then they would get slaughtered by, by other people. That'd be pretty powerful. Ooh, a rally spell as well. Rally is fun. Because the rally spell makes it so that your companions stay and fight longer and they don't run away when they get weakened. But you can also use it on people you intend to murder. I'm sure you can imagine the effect already. Let's say you're planning on killing somebody in their home. Most likely when you attack them, unless they're feeling particularly up for it, they'll start running away. They'll run to the door to alert the guards. If you rally them, they will stay and fight. They'll be like, yeah, I can take them on, I can do it, when in reality they really stand no chance. So spells like Frenzy and Rally are gonna be important. And also, I suppose Calm as well. We could attack somebody and then just calm them down while we prepare a different attack or just wait for some of our health or magic to regen some something like that you can do some you can do some fun stuff now while we're raiding forts like this while they're not as profitable as let's say alien ruins forts usually have a chance or two of having a chest where you will get sweet sweet loot and i'm talking items that will be worth a lot more than others. Like, for example, Feather Shoes or Fortify Fatigue Pants. I believe these are also loot items that we can find. They usually don't weigh a lot and you can sell them for a lot. And sometimes they have effects that you really, really want. And on this difficulty, I'll take whatever I can get. What I'm really hoping to find are some robes of deflection. They're robes with a little bit of a shield effect, so I can wear something in combat that's actually going to increase my power without decreasing the spell effectiveness. That's generally going to be the goal for us. It's why we stay in clothing, because... It lowers the effectiveness of everything else. Like, even if you wear just a few pieces of armor and you try to use something like a Paralyze, the amount of time the enemy is paralyzed is drastically reduced. So, we're gonna have a goal to always have 100% spell effectiveness. As long as we're using spells, of course. Hunt him down. Meanwhile, I will loot. That's the wonderful part about having a companion like that. I can do my own stuff in the meantime. Good job, buddy. Proud of ya. Hehe. <laughs> Such a sneaky scamp. Go to the barracks block. I don't think we were quite done exploring up here. No, there was one more area that we had yet to check out before we go deeper. So I'm really hoping that we can come out of this fort with some good items in our pockets. This also leads to the barracks block. Okay, so it leads around then. It's gonna be a little bit of a loop. Whip. Okay. That's good. That's good. Doesn't have to be too big. Just big enough for us to explore. Ooh, this is an open room here. You got him, Scampy. Hmm. There are some downsides to having a companion who wants to use ranged. Because they might end up in situations where you just really want them to go there and smack him in the face real quick. But instead, Scampy is determined to do other 
do other things. Like, I feel like summoning something like a zombie would be so cool because he would just sort of go for the enemy and smack them to death. Well, Scampy does this little pirouette like, ooh, ooh, am I gonna throw a fireball at you? Am I gonna smack you? I don't know, neither does Dark. But there's something I really like about Scampy. Now we could get, I'm considering what we'll get as a, is it apprentice level or journeyman? I think it's journeyman. Yeah, it is definitely journeyman. Journeyman level conjuration spell, the flame atronach. While it doesn't have as much sex appeal as in Skyrim, it's mo it's kind of like an advanced scamp. It does melee attacks and it does range attacks, and it's based solely on fire damage. Which is perfect for us, because fire damage is something that we can weaken the enemy to, making the Atronach hit a lot. Yes, 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 fuck yeah. Oh, out of all the items, that was the one I wanted. I prayed, I prayed, I was like, if, if we're gonna find an item, please let it be this robe. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. What is this robe? It is the robe of glib tongues. It is essentially the Deceiver's Finery from the Dark Brotherhood quest, but it's better. I, I, I've i been looking at the wiki page and I looked at some different loot tables. I was like, hmm, what can I find in a chest? I saw this and I was like, oh, if we ever got that. Fortify Mercantile, Speechcraft and Personality. That's gonna help us with prices so freaking much. Novice Alembic, I'll take it for now. Oh, gosh, yes! I was gonna say high five, Scampy, but he's not here. Okay, that's how much it takes to, uh, to make me happy. This robe is going to be invaluable. Very cool. Very happy about that. <sighs> Good stuff. Okay, calm down, Dark. Calm down. Oh, <laughs> uh, where were we? What were we talking about? Yeah, I think we were talking about Conjuration. Because essentially, the way we want to go about using Destruction Magic, because right now Destruction is just a waste of Magicka. Compared to the power of a summoned creature, we're just wasting Magicka, just f for no good reason at all. But once we can make our own spells, we can start stacking weakness effects on the enemy. Let's say you make a spell. It has weakness to fire 100% for a few seconds, and weakness to magic 100% for a few seconds. And then you make a second spell that has more or less the same effects as that one. Weakness to fire and weakness to magic, but maybe slightly fewer seconds since you won't need it uh, as long. You apply weakness spell number one, you apply weakness spell number two, and because they are two different spells, those effects will stack. And I wonder if even the weakness to magic would then also amplify the effects of the next weakness effects that's added to it and then after that you can follow it up with a finisher some sort of fireball that will now be able to penetrate their insane defense that's given to them by the max difficulty so one of the ways to really succeed with destruction magic on this difficulty is going to be based all around making our own spells and making sure they're weak to the elements now i'm sure you can already figure out the benefits of having a flame atronach if you're also capable of using weakness spells so I think a Flame Atronach is going to be one of my best pals. But of course, we can also decide to get a Storm Atronach later on. I think they're slightly more powerful, and then we could start focusing more on using uh, Shock Spells, like make our own Finger of the Mountain spell. Now, I did buy one spell that was mostly unnecessary. I bought a Water Breathing spell. It's a cool spell, right? But I did remember that we do actually get a free Water Breathing spell in the Shaden Hall Guild during the recommendation quest. We get Bouyancy, Bouyancy, I, th this word, I don't know how to pronounce it, okay, I'm Norwegian, deal with it. That also has a water breathing effect, but it also has some feather, and I think it's slightly more magicka efficient, but whatever. Here's another thing I've been thinking about. Once we've gotten ourselves a lot of spells, sooner or later we might get to the point where we have spells that are just obsolete. You can't remove them from the spell book in the regular game, but you can use console commands to remove them. You do something like, you find the ID for the spell, and then you do player.remove spell, type in the ID, and it disappears from your spell book. That's something I'm thinking about doing. I don't really consider that cheating, because if anything, I'm gaining a disadvantage by losing a spell. But it would help make the inventory more neat. You can also do it about custom spells. If I make a custom spell that eventually becomes too weak and outdated for my own needs, I can just remove it. And I like the thought of that. Now, 
How many minutes do we have left? We have about 10 minutes we could go. Would we be able to raid this ruin in time? Piu Kanda. I love going into alien ruins. They contain so many great opportunities for treasure. Welkin stones, Varla stones. Maybe even an alien statue that we could give to Umbakano. Alright. Let's do this thing, Scampy. Let's get going. What we're really hoping for in here is, of course, an abundance of stones, because we have a lot of carrying capacity now. We don't even have the ease burden effect active. But us choosing the warrior sign, getting the feather shoes, and also having ease burden. Oh, it's such a it's such a convenience. I think we're gonna put flare back on here, because we're most likely gonna face a lot of creatures where frenzy won't make a lot of sense. I done goofed. I goofed. As you can see, I dropped I dropped the stone in the back, and now I can't retrieve it, so... Yep. That's why you always, uh... Bloop! Double check. It's time for the yoinking games. Boink. Yoink. Just gotta make sure that you blast it away from the back here. Now, we have to be... We can be less precise in the future. As soon as we start getting ourselves a destruction spell with an area of effect then moving items is going to be a lot easier. Let's say you have a room full of 100 watermelons. If you use a destruction spell with an area of effect on it, oh boy, do they go flying. It's, it's a sight to behold, and it'll most likely crash your game as well. But especially for areas like this, you can then just hit the spell anywhere in the vicinity, and it'll throw it down. Like, we could make our own custom spell that does, like, one damage for one second, but does it in a huge area of effect. And then that can be our... We'll most likely drop that sword if we need the space. And then that can be our get items down from area spell. Okay, so this is the way that we have to go back. This is like the shortcut back afterwards. I feel like you really should be able to shoot an arrow through that hole and hit a switch, but... And Marina doesn't... Marina doesn't think so, that's, that's fine. All right, let's go. Oh boy, rats. That's been a while. Get them, boy. Nice. Rats can be a bit nasty because they do carry diseases, so they're not the greatest to train on either. But right now, we shouldn't have to worry about training at all, right? Yeah, we're 10% of the way there, so we can just have fun. Oh, Skelebros. Another useful spell that the Conjuration Tree has is Turn Undead. Being able to make the undead enemies flee from us. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey Scampy, can you come back here? Thank you. So, once again, it'll work a bit like a Calm spell or a Fear spell. Just for the undead in particular, because I'm not sure if you can actually calm the undead. Oh, an arrow is just whizzing past me right now. Somebody over there, so I'm gonna stand behind this pillar to take some cover while Scampy finishes up work over here. Oh, if he can. Don't get knocked out now, Scampy. Oh boy. Scampy's in trouble. Come on, boy. Give him a shoulder bash. Good job. Then we'll deal with him. There are some Welkin stones laying about here that have been knocked off their pillars. I hope you can't hear my, uh, my tummy rumble on, uh, on microphone. See, the thing is, I usually like to record on an empty stomach. I find that if you try to do a lot of commentary and talking after you've eaten, you end up being a lot like, uh, yeah, that. Like, it decreases the ability for you to talk properly and you have to take more pauses. Maybe that's just me, but that's just something I've noticed. So I try to wait a while until after I've eaten to actually record. It does end up with me being hungry a lot of the time when I'm recording, but at least it it just helps me more make it just makes me more focused in a way because if you all know the feeling of having eaten a big meal and you're just like, oh, oh you body you, you don't want to feel like that. You want to be ready. You want to be on it. You want to psych yourself up. Been doing this commentary thing for how long now? I mean, I started back in 2010 with the commentary things. I I've been on YouTube since 2008, I think. January 2008, so... That's been how many years now? That's, uh, what's... 2000... That's nine. Nine years. But thing is, I didn't really do a lot of things back in the day. I didn't make a lot of... 
content. I remember what I made though. It started off with being very simple. I made stick figure animations using pivots or pivot as I, I as I called it back in the day. That was that was fun. I also made some different music videos using like footage from especially like games. Like I would take the cutscenes from Resident Evil 4 put them into my editor and just find a song that I really liked and I would just pair them up together. It's, you know, it's it's like an AMV, just that it's not an, it's not an anime, it's... Oh, I can push them in the back, nice. It's actually a video game. That was fun. I, I enjoyed creating things from a relatively young age and making things that I can be proud of and even though now I have a tendency to make things that are a lot better and more professional. Back then I was so happy with what I made and it's something that I really miss. Like, sometimes I sit down and I want to make something. I'm like, oh, it would be so cool if I could do something like back in the old days where I can take some footage here, find a cool song, pair it up and make like a cool music video of sorts. But I'm just so critical these days and I'm like, no, it's not good enough, it's not good enough, it's... I miss the carefree days where even though my content was really bad by most standards, I myself was just so happy with it. But this Oblivion series is one of the series that I am actually feeling fairly happy with right now and that's quite rare for me so I'm happy about that at least, at the very least. I guess I guess I could ramble on about that, about my, my YouTube career, it's slightly related and uh, we're just going through some ruins here, taking care of business. Is that a Varla Stone? That is a Varla Stone, we'll get that. I continue making random videos like that with no rhyme or reason or any proper upload schedule until I started discovering the wonder of Let's Plays either late 2009 or early 2010. And I wanted to do that myself because I spent hours just watching people play games. I remember the first proper Let's Play experience I had. Double Varla Stone all the way! Oh, we're lucky. We're lucky tonight! That's gonna be a good profit. Very nice. The first Let's Play experience I had was I watched somebody play Pokemon Crystal. It was Chugga Conroy, I do believe, who played Pokemon Crystal. Or was it him? I don't know. I mean, I can figure that out if I go back and look at the upload date, but I watched somebody play Pokemon Crystal. And I'd play Pokemon Silver when I was a kid, and it was so much fun to see somebody play this game that I cared so much about and that I had loved for so long, but still haven't played in such a long while, to see somebody revisit that and also talk over the game while they were playing and share the experience. That was a totally new concept to me and I found it so fascinating. And really what I try to aim for these days is to give the same effect to you, that you will experience the content that I make that I, the same way that I experienced the content back then that some of you might have played Oblivion a while back and you enjoy watching somebody with a okay amount of knowledge about it. I'm no master, there are still things that I need to learn and probably should have done differently throughout. But still, that there's somebody playing a game you care about and commentating over it and just enjoying, enjoying being along for the ride. So I eventually just decided to do it myself. And I got myself a old game that I know and love the Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King for the Game Boy Advance, but I played it on an emulator on my laptop back in up. I'm an idiot. I thought I could still push them back, but I can't. I played it on an emulator back in the day, and I recorded my screen using a rather bad camera. So it was an emulator of a Game Boy game on a laptop screen recorded ah! by a camera. Oh boy! Oh! Oh! Skeleton with an axe! Get him, boy! You're fired! I can't trust you to do anything while I ramble on about pointless things, can I? Silly goose. Needless to say, the quality wasn't great. I still have uh, the first video up on- I still have those videos up on my channel. You can find it if you search for my, my first video, but... Oops. I just enjoyed it so much and thought of sharing something even when nobody watched. For some reason, I just enjoyed it so much and I just kept on doing it. And then over time I started playing different games and I amassed some experience and people that came across the channel just seemed to stick around and then here we are. Almost six, almost seven years later. Good times. Yep, that's a trap. Let's go! Alright Scampy, go get him boy. 
Don't get... Oh, boy. Oh, good. Scampy wasn't the only one who was thick enough to fall for that trap. It was also him. Oh, so many Welkin stones. Will we have enough space for all of these? Looks like we still have plenty of space. That's good. Good to know. Ah. Be able to make quite a decent fortune. We could probably sell these to old Ungar. Try to get a good price from Ungar. I mean, we have the robe of glib tongues now, so when Ungar sees us in a dress, I mean, if I could whistle right now, I would do the, the, the cat call whistle effect, but I can't whistle. I've never been able to. It's always bothered me, but back in the day, I didn't even know how to snap my fingers, so that's something I learned now, although it's, uh, it's a bit of an unpredictable power. It tends to... Uh, speed ahead time like somehow it controls the flow of time me snapping my fingers it's it's a bit scary but I, I think I've learned to tame the power and have it under control for the most part somebody saw me somewhere oh there he was where does this lead Piacunda where but I wasn't is this the yes this is the part that leads back okay so this is the road back, so we more or less explored most of the ruin right now. We've done a bit of a speed clear here. But there should be just a few more items for us to get. I haven't come across an alien statue. I'm a bit disappointed about that, but overall looks like... Oh wow, no, we're not done yet. There are still more to explore. May have found the way back, but that doesn't mean we're done. Let's open this up here. It's a mort flesh and some gold. And in recent years, people have also come to me and asked for, you know, advice. How do, how do I start out doing uh, commentaries? How do I, how do you do YouTube? And just, you just gotta enjoy it. You just really gotta enjoy it, and you gotta just not. Oh, I got. Of course, I get a disease the second a rat hits me. Oh gosh, that's bad. Well, we have a Cure Disease Potion, so we should probably sip that, because I can't have my strength being drained. There we go. It's all about having fun, and just learning along the way, and trying not to fret too much about the content that you make in the start, because... Let's Playing is the same as any other skill. Like, commentary is the skill that you have to train, like anything else. Like, you don't naturally start out being good at, let's say... I don't know. Playing an instrument. Like, you you can be naturally gifted, of course, but you will always need practice. You don't start off playing, playing Beethoven, you know? It takes a lot of practice. And the more you do something, the better you get. You gotta suck to get good. That's always, that's always been my motto. And it's something that, like, recently there are other hobbies that I wanted to take up. Like, I, I want to learn how to play music. I want to be able to put musical notes together that actually sound decent and are not just a mishmash of randomness. And when I actually find a good melody, I don't want that to be just a stroke of luck. I want that to be me knowing knowing my shit, but it's it's something that takes a long time. It's 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 a craft, you know, it's an art. And these days I just don't have the have the patience to do that, but I'm really glad that back in the day Carl was so bored that he decided to sit down in front of a very, very poor quality microphone and start mumbling. And I think it's important for a lot of people to remember that most people you see who are really good at something did not start out being that good. Like, I can, I can do the same. Like, if I see some sort of piano cover channel where they do piano covers of like, you know, the Attack on Titan opening theme, it's just like dun 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 you're just like, how is this possible? It's like, that's not where they started. Go back to their channel. If they've been posting for several years, check out their first contents. You can do that for a lot of big channels. Just look at the first videos they made. Everybody has to start somewhere. I think that's important to keep in mind. Because I remember my commentary back in the day. I was so subdued. Mostly because I am a very quiet and reserved person in real life. Most people who know me would know that, but... After a while of commentary, you cannot actually hurt a ghost with your arms, Scampy. Can you try using something else? Ah! Well, bash it to death with a mace. That's a bad idea. It has a frost enchantment and ghosts are resistant to frost. I was very subdued in my commentary because mostly people were in the house and I didn't want people to hear me. So I believe I was something like... 
Hello guys and girls, uh, Moises from the Dark here, and uh, today we're uh, going to be playing some uh, Die Hard uh, Nakatomi Plaza. Uh, so, uh, in this first level here, we're going um, to try to kill some bad... Like, that was me! There was no confidence, there was a lot of us, and oos, and is, which I've tried to cut out in uh, later years. I very rarely ever say, uh, when I'm thinking. I just tend to... Get quiet when I think. I just, I just stop for a second. It looks like you know dark dot has stopped working. But well then, that was quite the ramble that I just put you through. Hopefully, some of what I said was of interest, maybe of inspiration. But the start is always the roughest part. The one, the first 100 subscribers is always the roughest part. But if you enjoy what you do, then uh, you are probably more inclined to succeed. I don't really think you can succeed, especially in this oversaturated market that we're in right now with just doing something because you want to get big and chasing trends. I just think you should do something that you really enjoy and focus on having it as a hobby. That's that's what I feel. I know that wasn't necessarily Oblivion related. I've tried to keep most commentary I do within the Oblivion videos to be Oblivion related because usually I prefer it when commentators stick to the topic at hand, but I figured it was kind of related, and it was going to be another alien ruin delve, so I figured that was a good way to fill the time. This episode might actually have been uh, 40 plus minutes. Looks like I failed my goal, but hey, I don't think you care. Get out of here, you freaking elks. Well then, guys and girls, I think it's about time we conclude today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you will tune in next time for more. Have a still good day, take care and stay awesome, but most importantly everybody, stay dark, goodbye.